All right. Okay, so this uh, one of the things that we need to learn here, one of the most critical things in this unit is obviously since it's a logarithm, logarithms and exponents unit is understanding what a logarithm is. It, uh, just like anything else, you're learning trig. One of the most critical things is understanding what the sine ratio is and uh, what the cosine ratio is. Once you learn that, then you, you know, then you can work with it fairly intuitively, but having an understanding of what it is is critical. So the first thing I ask you to do is just to experiment with the calculator to see what this does, what that key does. So hopefully you found that key on your calculator. I mean, this is this calculator. It's uh, right there on here. I'm assuming you experiment, experimented with numbers. You might have just tried to go a log of 9 and log of 45 or whatever, and you notice that you get sort of random numbers. Maybe you started trying other numbers that maybe were more, you're all logical people, you'd probably try not just random numbers, but you'd try some kind of logical sequence. What, number did, what numbers did you try? What numbers did you try? 1 to 10. 1 to 10. So you did log of 1, and you got 0, and you did log of 2, and you got that, you mean? And so on. Yeah. Now you could actually do this if you wanted to not just keep entering numbers. On this calculator, you know you can make a table of values. You can draw graphs, but you can also make tables, so you don't have to keep entering the numbers. You could, as long as you enter in as a function here. Now we haven't looked at it as a function, but if you put log of x and then go look at the table, I don't know how familiar you are with the calculator. If you set up the table here, table set. So I don't want this to turn into a calculator lesson here, but I'm just going to make a table of values starting at zero, going by ones, and then you can see what values you might have picked. So this is this is a value, and then this is the logarithm, okay, of that value. So I push the logarithm button. Logarithm of one is zero. And then slowly they increase here. What happens next here? One. Becomes 1. Logarithm of 10 is 1. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to scroll through this whole list here, but is it all going to be numbers like this? Any going to be any more whole numbers? Next whole number is at 100. Okay. Now this is not going to get there, right? But if we looked at, if you looked at this, the next whole number is going to be 100. And then after that, what's the next whole number going to be after that? Thousand. If you, hopefully, at some point you, in your experimenting, you've zoned in on the fact that log of powers of ten are whole numbers, and logarithms of not powers of ten are not whole numbers. So that's the first thing that you discover on there. What does that mean? What what is the logarithm of a number? Like, why is the logarithm of 102 and the logarithm of, what's the logarithm of 100,000 going to be? It's going to be 5. What is the significance of this number? How would you explain it? It's not necessarily easy to explain, but. The exponent required of a power of 10 equal Yeah, it's the, it's the exponent that you need, okay, the exponent required to make this number as a power of 10. 100 is 10 to the power of 2, so its logarithm is 2. 100,000 is 10 to the 5, so its its logarithm is 5. Now, this one's harder to see, but logarithm of 520 is this number here. Because if I did 10 to the power of 2.71600. Now, it's not going to be exact because this continues on, just like square roots and everything. It's irrational, but it's 520. Or logarithm of 10,000 is 5 because 10 to the 5th is, sorry, 100,000. You take any number you want. If you know that 10 to the power of 2 is 100, then log of 100 is 2. They're inverse operations, just the same as any other kind of operations, like 
square and square root, squaring and square rooting. You notice they're on the same key here? These are on the same key. 10 to the power of x and logarithm are on the same key because they're inverses. Just like uh, square root you're more familiar with. If I say um, if I say square root of 9, I get 3. If I take 3 then and I push the squared key, I get 9 again. Those are inverse operations. This is exactly the same here. If I do the logarithm of whatever number you want here, logarithm of 45 is that number. If I now do 10 to the power of that number, okay, I know there's a quicker way to do this, but I don't want to lose the, the point here. Did I get everything right there? Okay, you get basically that. The reason it's off a bit is because this is an irrational number. It actually doesn't terminate there. It keeps going. But those are inverses. It's hard to explain in words, probably when you're asked to explain there what it is. It's hard to explain what that is, but the way Braden said it's pretty good. It's the, it's the number or the exponent required on a power of 10 to make whatever number you're, you're looking at. Okay, so at some point I asked you to explain this here. Describe what you think a logarithm is in words. If you haven't written that, you can do that after. The second thing that I ask you to do is look at what happens here if you take 50, 500, 5,000. If you take numbers that are multiples of 10 of each other, if you do those, I mean, it doesn't have to be those. It's just uh, those are the numbers I picked here. Log of 50, log of 500, log of 5,000. What do you notice about the numbers? What would the next one be here? Log of... 50,000, and what's it going to be? Four point. Four point, yeah. Once you know the whole number of logarithms, you can, you can see how the other ones fit in here. Right? If you go back to that table that I was on, I was somewhere here on my table. Remember up the table here, logarithm of 10 was 1, and you said logarithm of 100, what's it going to be? 2. So all of the logarithms in between... 10 and 100 are going to be one point something. Once I get past 100, all the logarithms are going to be two point something, right? If you know that, if we know that log of 10 is one, and log of 100 is two, and log of 1,000 is three, in between there, right? If you want log of 50 it's going to be in here somewhere. And it's going to be that number, that one point. Sorry, that's good. I put it in the wrong place. It's going to be in here somewhere. It's going to be one point something. And then if you do a log of 500, it's going to be in there. It's going to have the same second part. The decimal part's going to be the same for both of them. It's going to be one higher because this number is 10 times higher. Now, right now, we can't really fully show why that's true, why the decimal part is the same, but we will as we go through and look at logarithm laws and things. But it has to do with the fact that this is 500 is 10 times 50. Every time you multiply it by something by a power of 10 or by 10, this value increases by 1. Okay, but at this point, hopefully you just notice the what happens with those values. This is tougher when you start to look at decimal values. Hopefully you notice that all of the things that are, you know, 500, 5,000, 50,000, they all end in 0 0.69897004. So then if we do log of 0 0.5, what should it be? If we go back up to the top of the list, log of 50, was that log of 5? What would log of 5 be? Let's back it up here a little bit. We go the other way. Log of 500. Log of 50. Log of 5, what's that going to be? 0. 0.69. If I do log of 0. 0.5 now, which is the next thing in this side of the list, where does the where does this 0. 0.69 go? Like why is it not the same decimal there? 
yeah, once you get less than 1, you have negative powers of 10. It actually is still there. This is just as you subtract 1. Every time you divide by 10, you subtract 1 here. This is just continuing on with the pattern. Yep. Thank you. So that's, that's the, hopefully you managed to do those investigations.